Welcome, welcome. Tuesday night. Here we are. We're going to talk pants. And it was really fun. We had a sew along last Saturday. I guess not just the last Saturday, Saturday before. And we sewed through and I went ahead and I finished the pants we were working on. And during that webcast, there was a few questions asked. So I kind of took some time and I wanted to answer those questions. So tonight we're talking about 3219. ALC's pants. ALC is Andrea Lieberman company. Um, very talented lady. Uh, started in New York, moved to LA. She's based out of LA now. You know, I was reading an article today about Nanette Lepore and how difficult the fashion industry is, especially during COVID, obviously, but just in general, how difficult it is. And we see a lot of it. We're actually aware of a lot of it, but because we don't know the details behind um, Nordstrom's, Neiman's, how much they discount, how difficult it is for those companies to stay alive. It's just really an interesting article. And if you ever do subscribe to those W magazines or those kind of things, it really does, it's got some, there's just some great articles on fashion in general. And it's, um, it's changes, it's evolving and all the things that make it up. So that was, that was a really interesting article to me. So 3219, ALC's pant. Um, so during the sew along, you know, we talked about, I wanted to do a wider leg and I really felt like, well, I didn't feel like I saw that wider legs were coming into style and wider legs. I've always said to you all, the wider, the bottom, the wider, the hem, the wider you look. And that's a fact that that is a fact. So I really thought for a long time, it took me a long time to come up with this. <laughs> Some of you might have come up with it a lot faster than I did, but it took me a long time. That finally when I saw a pant and it has slipped, I thought that's it. That's a way to do a wider leg and give you a thinner look. It is important that the slit's in the front. So what I first want to do is I'm going to show you some pictures. And we're going to show you um, the first picture. You notice this, the slit's in the front. And what, what that slit does is it literally makes your eye go up and down. Notice that you don't look at her ankles and you don't say, oh, they're fat. And you don't say, oh my gosh, I've got a scar on my leg. You don't say any of that. You automatically, your eye just goes vertical and it goes up and down and it's a really nice look. It's a very summery look, even though I actually released this pattern for the fall because it looks amazing with a little short boot or a tall boot or whatever. It's just a home run. It's just a really fun look. So I want you to contrast that with the next couple pictures because the next couple pictures what I did is I put a slit I, I found pictures of slit in the sides because some of you might think well a slit's a slit no it's not a slit in the side actually doesn't manifest itself as a slit unless you're standing in such a way where you're forcing the slit to show so it still takes your eye out to the width of the hem and it doesn't work like a slit does in the middle so let's look at the next one. Same problem there. It looks for a wider leg and doesn't give you the opportunity of the slit. That slit in the front makes all the difference. So we're gonna agree that the slit in the front is just the best possible way to make that wider leg look, make you, help you look your best. All right, so then also during the webcast, or I'm sorry, during the so long, this is the webcast, sorry. Um, we talked about lining and what you would do if we wanted to line. So I went ahead and I lined these pants and I want to kind of take you through the steps I did to line them. Okay, and I, I love them lined. I mean, I can poo poo lining all I want, but boy, a nice pair of lined pants, they just, they feel good, they, yeah, whatever, you know, but they, they're a little extra work and you got to think about why do you want them, but if it's for the feel and the luxury of a lined pair of pants, it's pretty nice. Okay, so I want to take you to this first picture because um, what I did is I, I walked through the steps that you're going to need to line. So, and I can't even know that I can read what I wrote up there, but <laughs> um, the first step is, okay, you don't want a pocket in your lining, so you're going to overlay the pocket onto the lining. And you're just going to cut the fronts and I cut them with a seam up it because you're going to, you know, in this particular pan, I have a seam open in the front, but I wanted that in the lining too. And what I did is I attached it at the opening. 
So I, I and I put them on and they look really nice and the, the lining doesn't show. I did want to mention the color of lining that I went to because when you're dealing with a lighter, I, I'm gonna, it's not a white, it's kind of like a winter white. Um, I wanted the lining to look like it was my body. So I chose a lining that was fairly close to the color of me. This might be a little darker than me, but that was the goal. I Be careful of your lining choices. You don't want to go like with a white. Well, or you can go with a white. It just depends on what you want the, it to look like. So you might, we've got some beautiful linings right now. You might put it under your fabric before you decide the color. Get, you know, keep several colors on hand. I, I'm a big believer that lining is a stash, stash worthy item. So put several colors underneath the fabric and kind of stand away and see if you can see the difference between them. But if in doubt, you're always better to go darker. It brings out the color of the fabric rather than um, a lighter color. So just, that's all. Okay, so step one is you overlay the pocket onto the lining. I don't want a lining in my pocket. And then I'm gonna cut away on the right side of the pant. Here's a little bit that I cut away. I'm gonna cut away one and a half inches and if you jump to go to the not the next picture but the next picture yep there's your pattern for it so see how piece number one that's your fly front and not on both sides just on the right side and just the way to the best remember that and I took some pictures of when I was sewing this so you could kind of see what I was doing but what makes sense is it's the side where the fly comes comes over to that side. So on the side where the fly is, you're sewing right to the fly, but it's this side that you're going to cut away. So that's why I say it's be the right side. And again, if you just put it like it is, you'll figure out which way it is. So this is the portion that I cut away. You're gonna to wanna to cut away about an inch and a half wide all the way down. And then you're going to sew it just right sides together, the whole lining is made. You're gonna construct the whole lining and then you're gonna sew it, pull it forward, do right sides together and sew down, sew the other side and then finish the crotch of the pant. Or you can leave the crotch open and sew to that point. It doesn't make a difference which way you do it. It doesn't even matter if you leave a little bit of it open. That's okay too. But just keep in mind the only place that it's attached to the pant generally is the fly. The rest of it is completely separate from the pant and you could pull it up if you wanted to. And you, obviously you're putting wrong sides together. And then you pin it all to the waistband and then when you go to put the waistband on you're going to hem the line, you know, you're going to have the lining and the top of the pant together. You just put the waistband on just like we showed you during the sew along, except now you have the lining incorporated. When you're doing the lining, you're not gonna wanna stitch the darts because you don't want dart on top of dart. Just all you have to do because the lining is so thin, you're just gonna tuck a little pleat, the size of the lining. Um, and again, don't put it on top of the dart, stagger it. So that if my dart is, if my dart is right here, my tuck is right here, and if my dart is right here, my tuck is right here. They want them to be in the same proximity, but they don't need to be exactly right on top of each other. And so, and you don't want them on top of each other because it'll, it'll make it a little more bulky than it needs to be. And again, don't stitch a dart. It's too time consuming. Just make a little tuck in the lining. Okay? Okay. So let's answer questions. You create lining by sewing back to front. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, basically that just means that you create the whole pant. Once you cut away from the front, you don't make any changes to the back. The only difference would be don't sew the darts. And then just create that whole, oh, I'm sorry, that's what you were helping me with. I'm sorry. You just create the rest of the pant. Just sew and create the rest of the pant. Okay. Um, I have a high right hip. My right pant leg always has wrinkles on an angle from the inseam inseam down toward the side seam. Suggestions to fix. If you're positive that it is a high right hip, change the shape of the French curve on one side. Don't make them the same. You, you want to fix the problem on pants where the problem is. If you have a crooked waist, you make the waist crooked on the pant. 
if you have one hip higher than the other, you make the pant that way. So typically, um, and, and I'm pretty positive on this from, I fit, I don't know how many women in pants, including last Sunday, we had a wonderful pants class at the store. It was just so much fun. And we have an online pants class coming up online. It's starting, I don't think it starts this week. I think it starts the following week, but check the online site because it's, it's a really thorough class and it goes over all of these details. The shape of your hip most likely is the same on both sides. Just one is in a higher position than the other. That's all DNA and, you know, usually it's the same shape. It's just one is higher than the other. So typically <clears throat> you can cut both sides out the same and then just change the lower side by the waistline, by changing the waistline. And that typically will do it. So don't change where the wrinkles are. The wrinkles are just telling you there's a, a problem a little bit higher up. Okay, so watch for that. What if you have pockets? I have pockets. Um, I have pockets on my pants. I, this was the one, this is the pair that I made on our sew along. So I did put pockets in because you guys um, love pockets. So there are pockets in the pants, but there's no pockets in the lining. You don't want pockets in your lining. That, that would not be logical. So that's why when you're cutting your lining, you're gonna put the pocket piece behind the pant front and you'll cut that as one. Okay, is the Lulu fabric appropriate for this pant? Absolutely. Anything, I, you know, look, uh, the whole reason I made all of these different fabrics tonight is to show you how much fun you can have with this pant pattern. It's just, I just think it's a great versatile base. Now, let me just say to you, for those of you, as we talk about fit a little bit, the number of this pattern is 3219. So that's purposely been numbered that way because the base is 3200. 3200 is Sally's pants. So 3219 is off the base of Sally's. So if you notice anything 32 numbered is off Sally's and 34 numbered is off the yoga. So the yoga pant. So those that gives me a woven base and a knit base. And th so that's how I've numbered them so that you would know. You kind of would give a heads up as to what alterations you need to make. So with this 3219, knowing that if you have Sally's pant, it's the same body. Basically, I just did the style changes. The leg is different, obviously, um, and the, the pockets and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. If you have Sally's pant fitted to you, make the same changes or take the style of 3219 and put it on to Sally's. Okay, okay. Any questions? We're doing good so far? Can we play with style a little bit? Do you think you understand lining and all that fun stuff? Or you can you can always ask as we go along. But I really like my pants. I gotta tell you, I really like my pants. So thanks for watching my sew along. And I got a new pair of pants and I'm really happy with them. And I don't think I would have lined them, but you guys kind of pushed me to line them. And that was kind of nice because they're real, I, I love them. Okay, so then I started talking um, styling. And then another thing that came up in the webcast was what would I wear with them? Because they are a wider bottom, and so I probably have to be a little careful, but I went through and I made like four different, five different outfits on what I felt like would look really good with them, and then you can have your fabric choices as to mix them up and blend them around. Okay, so we're gonna start with this picture because again, what I did is I was looking through different um, pictures, current, current trends. I found this Ellie Tahari pant, and I just love this, it's $300, and it's 100% polyester. I wanted you to notice that because um, I got a question, an email a little while ago on polyester, and I've had several people say to me, you know, do you use polyester? I do. I'm just careful about time of year, and I'm careful about where on my body, because for me, in the humidity here in Dallas, it just gets really hot really fast. But the bottom half of me, is for whatever reason never uncomfortable. I It's just the top half. So I use it a lot and so I noticed in this pant that sells for $300 it's 100% polyester. So I do think some of these beautiful polyesters that have come out they're wonderful for pants especially because what is polyester great for? It doesn't wrinkle. So the beautiful thing about using polyester on the bottom is that it doesn't wrinkle and IT wise they just are really really flattering. So I took this ALC's pant and I made this um, Ellie Tahari pant. Now, you notice the Ellie Tahari pant 
is gathered in the top portion. And we don't need to do that. It's not as flattering to do it. Um, I'm gonna, I did it out of this one right here. Now this one is, um, I've gotta go back you guys and figure out my numbers here. I should have done a better job. The fabric is at $43.94. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this. $43.94. All right, so I used three yards because what I did is I wanted enough to make this little tank. Now I put this on this separate um, mannequin because if I had it on this one, you couldn't see the bottom, but it is really, I put it on, it's a really cute outfit. I just did a little tank. Now the other thing you can use poly for is like a tank to wear, um, you know, and then have like a little cotton something over it, which is what I did with the black. But let's go back to this fabric for just a little bit now. Prints are just really popular on the bottom. They're really just all over the place. And I know some of you say, oh, I just can't do that, I can't do it. So here's your little push, kind of to get out of your shell and try it a little bit. So $43.94, it's a beautiful colors. I've got plum I could put on top, I've got white, I've got, and so what I tried to do again, you guys know I'm always doing this, and it's not even on purpose as much as it's kind of just sheer habit, is I tried to mix and match and put, you know, like I could wear this with this or this with this, you know, so I could really kind of travel away and just take my little set that I had just made and off I go, okay. Um, okay, so a stitch in the ditch. Well, stitching in the ditch, I know what that is, but I'm not sure where you're referring to. So you'll just, if you'll just re-ask that question and where did I stitch in the ditch, I can answer that question, okay? Um, and, and a poly blend. So just know that it depends on the fabrics. You guys, I'm getting Nanette, I'm getting Sally Lapointe fabrics. I'm getting Lafayette 148 that are 100% polyesters. I just don't believe that's the same quality of polyesters that you find at Joanne Fabrics. So a polyester isn't a polyester. Isn't a polyester. A polyester is um, a fabric that they can really morph into almost anything. However, at the end of the day, it's still a polyester. So it can't. I mean. If you look at these wickaways, they're 100% polyester and they're supposed to be the coolest thing on the planet. I don't really understand that technology. I've been trying to get someone to explain it to me. I've been trying to look for someone in New York who understands it for probably five years and I've not been able to find it. Somebody wanted me to kind of talk about polyesters and, and their comfort level and I don't, I, I'm not really don't have, feel like I have enough knowledge to do that. It is a PBS show that I'm working on. Um, and I'll let you know when I really have some answers that are accurate and solid and, you know, we'll really do a knock-up job on it because I know all the questions, I just don't know all the answers. But I do know that, like, this polyester, this 100% polyester, feels like silk. It just feels amazing on. It just feels wonderful. It pressed beautifully. We're typical polyester. One of the reasons I don't like poly is I don't like working with it. I don't like sewing with it. I don't like the amount of work it takes to get from point A to point B. Once you get there, it never wrinkles. But I just don't enjoy that process. But this was different. This, this pressed really well, and I didn't have those issues with it. That's okay. That's okay, sweetheart. I'll just pick it back up. Okay, so oh, guess, okay, so the, the um, vocal is still here. Yeah. So we lost our camera, everybody just hang in. We're gonna just restart it, it'll take us five minutes or so and then we'll be back okay. and we'll finish up. 